uh, took part at the uh, College of Piping Winter School in Germany. I was in the class with Craig Munro and uh, when it came to the uh, graduation ceremony they offered some, some uh, presents uh, for the best students and <laughs> I was lucky and I got the pipes and I'm very happy with them. I'm looking forward to, to see how my backpipe was made. Hi. Hi. See you. How are you doing? So what we have here is the raw materials uh, mm -hmm. you can see here. Mm -hmm. All the blocks of wood that we actually buy this in from Tanzania. We cut these to size and bore them. Mm -hmm. Leave them to dry out for six months because you know it's a natural moist of course, yeah. material and you need to leave it to dry out. If you don't, Quite simply, they'll crack. Crack it, as you know. Uh, yeah. So this feel that. Yeah. Oh, it's very quite heavy, isn't it? It's very heavy. Yeah, it is. It's a very dense material as well. After yeah. The mm -hmm. So the first thing we do, we go into one of the manual lathes there, mm -hmm. and we just kind of take it from square to round, just make it much more easier to handle. So you can actually see. I mean, it's, it's very dirty the wax there, but you can start to see the nice grain effect that comes through mm -hmm. on it once it gets roughed. One thing to point out here is you can see a a light part of the material here. Now it's a question I get asked quite a lot being a bagpipe maker is if the, if the wood's light does it mean it's a poor quality of wood? Uh -huh. That's not the case really. If you get in the, the centre of the tree is the darkest place possible. Of course. So if yeah. your pipes are really really dark uh -huh. and your wood came from the centre of the tree the further out you get the more light exposure it gets. But it has no effect on the sound. No effect on the sound whatsoever. Um, I mean if you leave your pipes out in the sun you know, it would actually lighten as well. Of course. The sun yeah. itself. Yeah. So, you know, so it's all about care and maintenance. So the next stage from taking it from square to round is we put it back into the machine. We take off the excess mm -hmm. material and cut it to length and mm -hmm. you put a small starter hole into mm -hmm. it because if you put a drill direct into that it would crack again yeah it would just yeah. explode so what we have is a, a piece of high speed steel yeah. with a carbide tip on it now we have to send these two in a way every six months they get re-tipped uh, because after you buy what you can see it starts to burn onto the tool onto the itself now mm -hmm. this isn't as you can see any ordinary tool uh, it's a very expensive uh, equipment. We actually have an airline mm -hmm. inside of there to blast the excess oh, wood yes. back up this chamber here, which means when you're drilling it, it doesn't build up and build up inside it, because if it did, it would just explode. So this is it's the same sort of tool from every piece of wood that we manufacture. So this one would do your stocks, this one would do your, your, your mid, your mid joint top sections. Uh -huh. What we have here is the, the two CNC audit machines. Yeah. These are definitely the most important machines that we've got. We've got a part here. We're going to show you the, the process of how to get it from that shape into a base stock. I highlight the fact that our bagpipes are machine turned and hand finished, which means I think we've got the best of both worlds. Purely for the fact that the machine turned part is the consistency. Every single part we do is exactly the same. Yeah. And then they go over to the hand finishing section, which means you've got the authentic look of a hand finished set of bagpipes. Now what happened years ago is you may have had somebody doing this by hand, which may have taken about 45 minutes to do this. The time you mark it out and physically turn it, this only takes about two and a half minutes to do it.
half here is the machine. The final coffee oh, it's just done on. Uh -huh. um, you see other manufacturers pipes and varnish, but for me, varnish doesn't give off the best finish. Uh -huh. It looks great for a week, don't get me wrong, but after that, it'll start to sort of flake off and tarnish. They can kind of come across a bit tacky looking in the end. A little bit oxidation. Yeah, that's right, you know, okay. but this will be falling off and almost in your hand, it can flake off in your hand. You yeah, know? yeah. Um, but what we do was by we should give it a buffer of polish, it's more of a wax finish on it. Mm -hmm. So the first uh, the first process is it gets buffed with this bulb here. Yeah. This is the wax. Now what this does is this gets rid of any kind of imperfections that's on the wood. And then we give it a final polish mm -hmm. on this bulb at the very end just to give it the shine and the brightness that it needs. Okay. What we have here is the, the process to make the imitation ivory mounts. Real ivory now, as you know, is illegal. You can't use it anymore. So we have to find something else. So what we use is imitation ivory. What this has is a, a marble effect for it. It's as close as you'll get to real ivory. It's quite a brittle material. This is why it has to be done in a manual lathe rather than in a CNC machine. Um, but it gives you by far the best finish on a set of bike pipes. Okay, so in here we've got the engraving department of all those bag pipes. Now we used to buy in all the nickel and all the engraving sort of thing, which meant we were relying on somebody else's quality and somebody else's delivery times. So we decided to make an investment and get an engraving machine. It's been a huge boost to us, not only in terms of being independent, but it's also helped us to get a lot of new orders as well, purely for the fact that we can identify pipes and make them very unique. We can engrave your name on it, your uh -huh. child's name, date of yeah. birth, anything like that. Um, quite recently we had the Peoria Fire Department contact okay. us. If you're a firefighter and you joined the Peoria Fire Department, you would get a set of pipes to play in the band. But originally they just wanted their name engraved on the wood somewhere. Of course. But we said, well, we'll take it a step further and we'll actually design you uh -huh. a full new pattern of it. We have the Maltese Knot, the PFD, which is the Peoria Fire Department. L50 is the, the station number, uh -huh. and we just done a couple of axes crossing over, typical okay. fireman, you know, and that, that was the outcome of it. You can see the, oh, the prototype there. Nice clean engraving. We even went to the extent, instead of having just a border, we gave them a rope going around it. As you can see, it's a, a rope effect. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, I see that. So, the internal finishes are the most important part of the bike pipe. Um, I'm a great believer, the cleaner the board, the cleaner the sound you're going to get, yeah. the cleaner striking you're going to get also. Mm -hmm. Have a look up the wall there, you'll see exactly where I'm coming from. After we bore it with the gun drill, we also do an extra process. It's just your typical steel roll, and it's just to kind of smooth out any roughnesses that we might have. Yeah. And it's all the small things of attention to detail that we, we, we look at. Yeah. Things like, you know, the joining of different, uh, you know, parts here. You might have another pipe, so <coughs> maybe a step comes along, you've got the imitation ivory and it steps down and it's good. Mm -hmm. We join it all up so it's just a nice flush finish there and you can feel that with your finger. Okay. You know, it's such a good join on it. It is, yeah. There's no itch that I feel. Yeah. It's just a smooth. Yeah. And all the things right down to the likes of the, the fitting of the ferrules as well. A big, big problem in the, the vacuum vacuum industry, as you know, are parts falling off. It's a huge problem. Nickel yeah. And that's because, you know, some of the manufacturers use one type of glue to glue on the nickel, the silver, the imitation ivory. Mm -hmm. They actually had a glue specialist come in to see us and he took away samples of blackwood, nickel, silver, imitation ivory. And what he did is he came back and he said, you basically need to use a different type of glue for every single piece. It's a bit more expensive, but we feel that at least that way it leaves the factory and we know it's never going to fall off. But what about the fact that uh, wood is a, as a look, uh, let's say, life form thing? Yeah, it's a natural. It's expand, yeah. expanding. Yeah, it's, the glue that we use has actually got a rubberized chemical in it, uh -huh. so the actual glue moves as well with it. Uh -huh. yeah. I'm just going to touch slightly now on how we manufacture the pipe chanters. Very much the same. What we do, slightly different from any other manufacturer. Other manufacturers will come down and they'll drill all of the holes at the same time. What we do is we have machinery that allows us to come down and drill these holes individually, which means we can then set 
any size of drill, um, any position that it comes in at, we can do it within 0 0.1 of a millimeter, which is very, very accurate. Um, and 1, 0.1 of a millimeter is a huge difference when it comes to sound in a bagpipe and the chanter. As you know, with all different pipe bands tune at various different pitches, it's just down to the pipe major and the pitch that they prefer. If a pipe major was to come in to us and request our pipe chanters, we could then say, well, that's our standard pipe chanter, but if they require a slightly flatter high A or maybe a sharper D, we can change that by either changing the size of the drill or the position that the drill comes in at. And then they would need to get a full batch of chanters made to the specific sizes. And we do that quite a lot for bands. After that, it's then sanded and polished it's then hemped and weeded up, ready to go with the bagpipes that we've already showed you. In terms of bags, whether it be a synthetic or a sheepskin or a black or a blue cover, then the shop that we sell the pipes to will then fit that. So now that you saw the, the, the full process of the Wallace bagpipes from start to finish. Exactly the same as your, your own Wallace bagpipes is made, you've yeah. got to sell. Good. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you.